a special Christmas present to everyone. I'm offering a download for a fully automated Wi-Fi router. It's something I started on the Raspberry Pi, and I might make something like this in the future for a Pine64 board, but when I started it, I didn't have any Pine64 board. In combination with the Pi Hole tutorial I wrote here, and what Pi Hole does is it allows you to block all the advertisers. You can use lists, you can add and remove. So let me tell you about the image first. So this Christmas present image comes with a customized router image. Its own recursive DNS server, which is called Unbound, helps increase your privacy as well. It has a changing Wi-Fi access point MAC address on every single boot with leak prevention using YPRI, the scripts I wrote. And one of the reasons for this is because our Wi-Fi MAC addresses are mapped out by various advertising related database companies and otherwise. Just take a look at the Wiggle database to see a public example of this. And that's one reason it does that. You can change those settings. You can change the Wi-Fi flags. And um, basically you can disable that if you want a static all the time same MAC. By default, it also has a log watch that monitors logs for suspicious activity. It emails them to the user account. It has port probe detection that includes stealth probes, so SIN probes and different things like that. And it'll notify you upon any machines in your own home network that might be probing around for services. So it's kind of a little forewarning there. It also blocks the Intel management engine's default ports for every single Wi-Fi client network-wide. And one of the things people don't realize is you can't block certain things that are built into the hardware unless you do it at the router firewall level. And that's the reason for this. And it's all automated. Everything's already set up for you. It has Pi-hole to block the ads and the unbound recursive DNS server. It grows to meet the size of your SD card. And I wrote a new service on this one that has automatic upgrades. So it'll add its own security patches without any input from you. So all you have to do to get started with this, download the image, there's a screenshot of Pi-Hole's interface showing you the statistics of different things it has blocked. But download the image. I have the page as a Christmas present. It's open for one week. So you can download it for the next week anytime. Follow this tutorial on using it. You just I have the instructions here. Download the image. Then extract using the Linux command, for example. Unxz decompress file name.exe. Then you'll get the .image file in return. You plug in your Ethernet cord between the ISP router and your Pi. You flash that image file you downloaded to an SD card, and it will automatically expand to meet the size of your SD card, so you don't have to worry about anything, really. You power on the Pi after the Ethernet and the SD card is in, and then simply log in by SSH to the default username. Or you can use an HDMI cord, hook it between your Pi and your television set. Use that, that will allow you to use your television set as a computer monitor. And at that point, you can just use the input button on your television. But of course, you have that option to SSH, which I usually do. It's already set up everything. It's got brand new SSH keys on every burn. So you, if you have multiple routers on your network, you're not going to have to worry about conflicting SSH keys. It automatically sets custom options for you from the user's first login. So you'll be able to set your SSID for your access point. I suggest choosing something nice and generic. Since it changes the Wi-Fi MAC address at every boot, it's going to look like a new access point every single time you reboot. And as mentioned, the mapping out of Wi-Fi is very common, prevalent, and the databases are public. So your client machines actually spit out your saved SSIDs and that's why I suggest choosing something nice and generic that way it shares locations all around the world so simply set your ISP router to the IP address of this Pi running this Christmas present image and that will use it as the DNS server that is built in for your ISPs administration page for the router. So just log into your ISP's router, 
Uh, set the DNS settings where your main DNS server should be this new Raspberry Pi image that I'm offering you guys. So that's all you have to do. Now you can take advantage of everything. So go ahead, follow the above steps, hook up your Ethernet, hook up the SD card into the Pi, power it on, log in for the first time using the default username of user and the password of router pass and exclamation point. I have all that information at the link. You can see an example of what happens when you first log in. It expands to fit your disk. It asks what you want your access point called. It also asks what you want the access point password. And at that point, it simply sets it. You can also later set up VPNs if that's something you're interested in on this router. You can turn it into a VPN router. Um, I'm offering this as a Christmas present just to say thank you guys for supporting me. Thank you for helping share my work. I really appreciate it and I do need your help. This kind of content sometimes doesn't get naturally promoted in the algorithms and that's a real shame because I think privacy content can be the most important topic of our time. We are at a huge crossroads in the technological world and we have to make a choice where we're headed and is it going to be the surveillance capitalism route or are we going to choose the privacy route I've chosen the privacy route I know I'm not going to you know I know I'm not going to make things off of focusing on privacy whereas I could make out pretty well on surveillance capitalism and but I think that's evil stuff and I want to help people with their privacy, so help me share these posts, help me share these videos. I'm going to continue with videos. What I do suggest next, after you download and burn this image, I want you to then, of course, log into your Pi Hole as the instructions show. Then it shows you how to set up your DNS in there. In fact, on the image, if you download the Christmas image, it's already set up for you inside the Pi Hole, so you don't have to worry about any of that setup. But you will have to log into your ISP router if you want to use it on your ISP router as the DNS. But after this, I do suggest going over to my Securing SSH article. I wrote with a example on common passwords and how to identify operating systems by their host name. And you can also identify operating systems just by the TTL when you ping it. So different operating systems have different response times, and that's another way. So there's so much out there that can identify things. What we're trying to do is be as vague as possible, blend in with as much as possible, and that's the goal here. And, of course, add security. So check part two of my securing SSH so you can add key authentication to your new router and pie hole. That way you won't even have to enter a password if you don't want to and you can use a much stronger login method. I included screenshots recently for this so the entire thing I have cut and paste commands showing you how to avoid man in the middle attacks by checking the fingerprint on the server side before you ever accept a new fingerprint. And of course, I give examples with screenshots for that. And I also give you several tips on fingerprint checking remotely, which is an important thing you need to pay attention to because man in the middle attacks, a lot of times they will focus on SSH. They want to have shell access to your machine. And I do suggest checking this out. I'll show you how to generate the RSK. A key pair and how to actually copy it over to the server it's very easy to follow I've made this guide really easy so you can add that extra layer of security and I also show you how to disable normal login so that way everyone except you will be banned from trying to log into your box now on this next part of the tutorial what we're doing is we're actually going to show you how you can actually set up Pi Hole on a Pine64 board. If you want to set up your very own Pine64 board based Pi Hole, of course the Christmas image will have it all set up for you, but if you have a Pine64 board, which you can get this board, the Pine64 LTS, it's only $32. And of course you just need to add a power source and an SD card and you're good to go. I'm going to show you how easy it is to set up Pi Hole on a Pine64 LTS board or any other board that runs Armbian. So you do Armbian config 
and this point we can go over to the software third-party software and go down to OK go down to the uh, third-party application installer now go down to Pi-hole ad blocker right here hit your spacebar to select then hit enter for install at this point we are looking at what it takes to install Pi-hole on Armbian which is being done in this example on a Pine 64 A64 LTS and here we are it's going to install it and offer you several different things that you may need so I'm gonna go ahead and select yes I am gonna use this as a static IP address and at that point what we want to do is select our network interface I'm gonna select Ethernet because that's how this is hooked up we'll go ahead and select our upstream DNS server what this means is what DNS server do you want Pi-hole to use in order to make new queries so we're gonna go ahead and try the quad 9 that's one of the good ones also open DNS is another good one if you're looking for privacy so we'll go ahead and try the quad 9 and the filtered DNS sick setting here and then we're going to use Steven Black's unified host list already all on there so if you have an Armbian it's really simple to do and we're going to install the web interface because as you as I showed it's very easy to manage this way we're going to log queries or for extra privacy you'll select go down arrow then spacebar to select off and this means that if you do select off it's not going to show you what is being queried and that'll add a little more privacy to all of your users and if you want to select a private privacy mode here you can actually hide everything go to anonymous mode down here or if you want to see what's being blocked and all the other details go ahead and go to high domains clients or show everything to show everything then hit OK now that it's installed Pi-hole we can go ahead and log into it first thing you'll want to do after you set up that first login just log in with the default it'll allow you to change your password there it's all automated you set your SSID and password the rest is done for you and then you can go over to the IP address slash admin to log in to your Pi-hole and then hit login and at that point you're gonna be brought over to this page and you may not have the statistics I have but that's because I've been running this for a day and you can see already today I've had 220 queries blocked this is a brand new test image of the image that I'm sharing with you guys as a Christmas present so what I want to show you next is go over to your settings and if you're not using the image that I'm sharing go to DNS up here and you'll have to set these settings on your own but if you do download the Christmas present this stuff is already added for you so you won't have to worry about that all you'll need to do is use it as your DNS server on your ISP router and use the Wi-Fi access point as a new isolated secure network away from your ISP's ability to collect the MAC addresses and host names of your devices that connect to this more private access point and that's the whole point of it all so it's got everything you need you can take a look at your whitelist here and you also have a blacklist where you can simply add domains that you find harmful I turned off the logging here because I wanted it to be more private I didn't want all the details of the browsing to be in here but you can turn that stuff right back on so that's what I have today guys I want to wish you all a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year I hope you enjoy this Christmas present that I'm offering and uh, be sure to show your support by sharing these articles and videos and I will be back later next year with more on how to protect your right to privacy